Hi guys, it's Randy and Shelly Knapp here with KnappStudios.com and we're really excited today to share um, our latest parlor scope from the Evolver series. We started this series in 2016. It's an open numbered series and this scope right here is a number nine. The wood on this scope is figured maple that is from here in Oregon and the accent wood is ebony. And I'm going to let Randy tell you a little bit more about the scope. <clears throat> They're not all exactly the same. So they have the same overall theme with the shape of the body and, you know, but uh, the knobs may be different. Sometimes I do onlays, different techniques, but um, this one with this style, I call these a natural because it, this is local maple from our area. And it's so highly figured that I really don't feel like I need to do anything to it to make it stand out. It's just pretty stunning as it is. Let the so, wood speak for itself. Yeah, huh? let the wood speak for itself. And you know, this series of the Evolvers, they harken back to our earlier days, but you know, 25 years ago we never had the equipment or the ability to produce things with the precision and uh, accuracy that we do now. So we can get a really smooth uh, rotator with the way we've designed the uh, head of the kaleidoscope and <clears throat> Shelley's always said you have to be able to pick it up and look at it like this so they are a, a statement piece that you know can go on a end table or a coffee table and they really do make a great statement I mean they're just I think they're beautiful just to look at on the outside and then you get the added bonus of the inside we're in win-win okay guys here's a close-up of the details on the knobs and the rotator so I did a double cut pattern on the rotator there and you can see I put little flutes on the knobs I think there's eight flutes on each knob and then a little maple accent at the bottom of each knob and from the same camera angle you can see the dichroic filters on the object cell as they come passing by okay guys here's a close-up of the eyepiece it's an ebony eyepiece, and you can see the intensity of the figure going down the barrel also this way. You can see the curly figure of the uh, grain, and the top of it's really hot. It's just beautiful wood. Oregon big leaf maple. So this is actually the outside of the tree and this is more toward the center of the tree. It's the wood on the outside of the tree, if it's like leaning out over a bank, it pushes, trying to push the tree upward and it collapses and makes these folds and wrinkles in the grain. It's so beautiful. Here's a close-up of the base of the scope and the riser handle. You can see the, uh, this is the outside of the tree again, as is this is toward the outside of the tree. And you see the figure starts to fade away a little bit as it gets inside the tree, and that's only two inches of difference. So all the most beautiful wood and the curly maple is typically right out toward the outside of the tree. And this is a beautiful piece. It's hand signed on the bottom, hand signed and numbered and dated. I have a fancy engraving machine that will make this look really professional, but people told me they actually preferred it to be handwritten, so we've always continued on with that. So the Evolver has a two mirror system, five pointed star. It has a fluid filled object cell with hand lamp work glass that Shelley's made. And these have her special pieces. There's one right there. There's Lucini's. Luchini. 
She also, this year, she just started putting some patterned dichroic pieces in there. They're still lamp worked, but they have a dichroic pattern on them, and they look really accentuate this image really nicely. There's one of those right there. Right through the center. Here it comes. So we're really enjoying those. And Shelly's going to give you an in-depth close-up look at the Lucinis. Another little take here, so... We're basically showing the interior of the Volver number 9, a two-mirror system, fluid-filled object cell with a black background. We have a glass magnification in this kaleidoscope. And the object cell has dichroic filters, which we're going to accentuate by... We're going to turn the uh, overhead fluorescent lights off here, and we're going to illuminate this with a little LED flashlight to show you the spectacular change in the effect of it. Yeah, this is filmed with the iPhone 8. We, I wish we could have done this 30 years ago. This is amazing. So this is what I would call a jewel tone image or a pastel image. It's the softer palette. And I tend to go to this image more when when I just want to chill, have a very calming, peaceful night, or viewing time. You ready to go dark? Yeah. So there, Randy just turned off the lights. We're still in a daylight, daylight lit room. And here comes the LED. We should show this flashlight. In fact, we'll show, we'll show you guys this technique as soon as we're done doing this. We'll show you all we did to achieve this. It's just a little $3 LED flashlight. And it's shining through the dichroic filters, which uh, all light that comes into this kaleidoscope comes through the filters and it changes the hues and the colors of the glass. Anytime you're looking at it, you just sometimes it's more subtle and you don't recognize it. Also, in the, in the jewel tone images, I'm able to get that color shift a little bit easier um, because of the softness of the glass that I'm using in there. They're more receptive to the color shift. The soft colors of the glass. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the soft colors of the glass. So I love that. So I really encourage people to play with their kaleidoscopes in different light sources because they'll do totally different fun stuff. Yeah. All right, I think we got to wrap that up. What do you think? Looks perfect. All right, we're going to move on here. Okay, here's a close-up of the Lucinis that I was talking about that's in the object cell now. So it's kind of like, as you're looking at the image, if you want to, you can say, where's a Lucini? And give you something, a different way of looking at your image. But I just want to show up close what I've done. Come this way, right there. And, and that way. There you go. With one piece, I can get multiple colors on this piece. So depending upon what angle it falls in, you're going to have multiple colors coming into your image. Plus, with the stratification of the dots on there, sometimes I melt them down in, sometimes I leave them bumped up. It gives you a whole other um, dimension, and another element in the image kind of creates like a 3D effect going on inside. And I just love that look. But these little guys are basically made with a flame that's about the size of a match head. These are real precision work and um, I, I just, I, I have really gotten fired up and excited about making them. I'm always begging Randy for time to go down and play on the torch. But I have to be in a very calm, steady, steady hand, um, have my zen on place when I make these because they really do take a lot of time and a lot of patience. So I just put on some really comforting music and just go to my happy place. And you guys know me, I love to play with color. So when I can make a piece like this and put five or six different colors on one piece, man, that gets me fired up and excited. And I hope that comes across in the image for you guys. Hope you enjoy our images. Thank you. That's what you got all emotional. You were doing good and you got all emotional. 
Okay guys, this is all we did with the flashlight. Here's the little flashlight that we're using. So we just turn the lights off, turn the flashlight on, shine it through those dichroic windows, and enjoy what you see. You can also play with the flashlight and by strobing it and moving around, you'll create different effects when you're looking inside. So get yourself a small little LED flashlight and have some fun with your kaleidoscopes. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about our work, visit our website at napstudios.com. Have a great day. See ya.